I've been a little bit heavy on the denim topics recently. And kindly, one of you guys called me out on it. Yeah, I, I tend to do that. I get fixated on one particular subject for a little bit too long. So to remedy that, this week there'll be less denim. I mean, there's always gonna be a little bit of denim, but this week, less denim. It's always gonna be connected to denim. You guys have heard me say this before. I got into menswear, at least I got into quality menswear through salvage denim. And by extension of that, the qualities that I found in a pair of raw salvage denim jeans. The history, the quality, the craftsmanship, and the, the classic nature of the garment. It informs how I view menswear. It informs how I, I view products overall. And as soppy as it sounds, but as a direct extension of that, it informs how I live my life. In particular, when it comes to, to consumer purchases. So what material has all the inherent qualities of denim? What materials being part of workwear, being part of sportswear, being part of the rebellious counterculture and then adopted by fashion, what material carries with it classic archetypes within menswear and within that specific styles within the archetype and what material has the ability like denim to, to age with the wearer to get to get better with time and with use. Right, I don't actually know why I'm making such a lead up to this cause if you're watching this video then you saw the title and you clicked on it so you already know it's leather. Oh, and before we go any further, really thank you for taking the time to, to click on it, to watch this. If this is your first time here, I'm Matt Wilson, this is CRD. As you've probably gathered already, we talk a lot about denim, denim and, and other menswear classics. So if you're into that, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button if you're not already. Right next to that, there's the bell notification icon. If you hit that, you're gonna get notified whenever I drop another video. And back to our regular programming. Leather, like denim, it wears in beautifully. Over time, it picks up a patina, which is much like the fades in our denim. It has the ability to, to get better with age, to get better with use, much like our denims. And it has the ability to contain a narrative, much like a pair of, of raw denim jeans. These garments, or in the case of leather accessories as well, they tell a story. Now, there's a pretty wide variety of leathers out there. As discomforting as it may be, or as discomforting as it is, I think over the years, anything with a skin, someone somewhere has turned into leather. And I would say that 99.9% .9 of things with skins should be left well alone and not turned into boots, lamps, or wallets. But there are a few leathers out there that are particularly well suited to making, making beautiful garments and beautiful accessories that really will last the distance. Leather garments, leather accessories, unlike denim jeans, they really can be heirloom pieces. For jackets, because that's what I want to concentrate on today. On the lighter side, you've got goat skin, you've got sheep skin. For the medium weight, you've got calf, you've got deer, and maybe cow. And then if you get into the heavy weight, you have steer hide, you've got horse hide, you've even got bison and you've got kudu. And even within those specifics, you've got a massive variety. But for leather jackets, nothing seems to be quite as divisive as the conversation on cow hide or steer hide versus horse hide. So that's what I'd like to discuss today. I have experience with both. I have my opinions on the pros and cons of both. But first, I'd like to dive a little bit more into the specifics. Oh, but just one thing. Aside from my personal experience and a couple of articles around the interwebs, most of the concrete facts in this video, they come from an article in just this subject that was posted over on the Horween website. And I put a link to that down below. Okay, let's start off with leather from, from cattle. Because this in itself has a number of variations. Steer hide. Now, most cattle that are raised for, for foodstuffs are steers. Bulls are made into steers for ranching. Snippy snippy. Bull hide, they tend to be larger and heavier and they've got like a lot of wrinkles around about the shoulders. Cow hide, it tends to be lighter in weight and it also contains more, more natural marks from, from cuts that have healed into scars, from bug bites, simply because cows tend to live a little bit longer than, than their steer counterparts. Heifers, now this is a cow that's had no offspring, no calves. And so the, the leather or the, the skin around about the bellies, it's not quite as stretchy, it's not quite as malleable as it is on the cowhide. Leather from cattle is more versatile in terms of consistency, in terms of weight. 
which means that the yields are better. And it's also, it's just much more available. On the flip side, horse hide comes in much, much fewer variations. But the variations across a single hide can be huge. Horses are just raised in a very different way than cattle. They're not bred for milk or for meat. And so the variety that we've got available is much less. And when comparing horse hide to cow or steer hide, there's massive differences. Horse hide has a coarser grain. It has massive variations in thickness across, across the single hide. And the hides tend to be lighter, they tend to be thinner. It's also far more abrasion resistant and it's got a different, different fiber structure. And the natural markings across a single hide, that's, that's far, far stronger in the horse hide than the cow hide. And that's not even when you, when you take into account like scratches that have healed into scars or bug bites because horses, they also live longer. When it comes to jackets, you've probably heard the term front quarter horse hide. The front quarters have been traditionally used for making jackets because they're tough and they're thin and that just makes them perfect for making jackets. I guess the big question is whether horse is better than cow. And as much as I'm about to compare the two, spoiler alert, horse is not better than cow and cow is not better than horse. It is completely up to your personal preference and of course the quality of the leather that's being used. Sorry if you were looking for a definitive answer. So as much as one is not better than the other, there are definitely differences in the way that the two leathers wear. This has an influence on how easy each of the leathers are to break in and which might be the better choice if this is your first proper leather jacket. These are the two jackets I'm gonna be looking at today. Both jackets are from Vanson. This one here, this is the cowhide one, and this is the Left Field Commando, and that's a collab that they did with Left Field NYC. It's in the, the asymmetrical biker style, which I got told off for calling the Perfecto style. It's a bit longer than the traditional biker jackets, which I personally find more practical. And the issue with, with the jacket being a bit longer if you are riding a motorbike, is taken care of by having this two-way zip. It's got a bi swing back, which is pretty necessary if you ever want to hug your friends. It's got a deep pocket here, and it is it's beautifully missing all the, for me, superfluous, superfluous things that I just, I don't feel that I need in a leather jacket, like the belt, like the epaulets, or like the stars. This here is the Vansin Enfield. At least, I think it is. I bought it second hand. Doesn't say anywhere exactly, but it seems to be. It's quite a classic leather jacket style that I believe originated in the 30s. And just like the Commando, it's, it's definitely got that, that motorcycle heritage. It's definitely got design elements that are specific for motorcycle riders, which, I mean, it makes sense, right? Vanson is, is a, motorcycle a motorcycle clothing manufacturer, so you'd expect that to bleed through even into their jackets that are maybe designed a little bit towards the, the fashion side of things. So this one, it's got, well, it's got the bias wing back, which, yeah, especially with horse hide, that's super, super important. It has a couple of buckles at the back for, for bringing in the waist, or in my case, letting out the waist. It's got a zip closure at the front, and it's got this wind flap as well, which it does help, it really does. It's got uh, zipped cuffs, it's got one chest pocket on the outside, and it's got a couple of interior pockets as well. And yeah, it's got the all important hand warmer pockets. As you can see, neither of the jackets are particularly lightweight. Both of them took quite a lot of wear to get them wearable. And they both got a ways to go before they're, they're truly broken in. To be honest, I think my grandson will end up doing that. The Commando was easier to break in. It just seemed to take less time and less effort and less discomfort to really lock into the shape of my body. And I still, feel, I still feel like a tank when I'm wearing it, but more one of those like modern quick fast tanks, less like a lumbering beast. Horsehide is known for taking longer to break in. And I knew that going in, I was prepared for that. But what I have found interesting is the different way that the two leathers break in. The commando jacket, so the, the cowhide one, it's just, it, it's stretched more to accommodate my body shape. Whereas the horsehide one, it's more, it's stacked to accommodate that movement. There's not so much of this, this bulbous section as you find in the cowhide. And I find that overall on the jacket, like across the shoulders, it's stretched out to accommodate, uh, through the body as well. I mean, maybe not quite so much here at the deep pocket because, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's a lot of leather stacked up here. 
But overall, yeah, I've got much more flexibility, much more movement in this, this cowhide jacket than I do, do in the horse hide. But despite all these things that could be considered drawbacks, not least of which is when I sit down with it done up, I almost castrate myself. Despite all these things, I'm actually enjoying the way that the horse hide is breaking in, I think slightly more than the cowhide. I've had this jacket for a lot less time, so I can't exactly say for sure. But I have seen worn examples, and I think that the the movement, the, the flexibility within the leather is going to come from this, this stacking that I mentioned earlier, rather than the leather stretching. And yeah, I really, I think I like that more because it's going to maintain more of that sharp silhouette over the way that the cowhide is kind of like stretched out to accommodate that movement. To bring this back to denim for a second, this, so the cowhide, this would be a nice, easy 14.5 irons tapered fit. This, on the other hand, the horse hide, this would be a 25 ounce monstrous slim straight. Both have their place, but one is just, it's definitely more practical than the other. And this brings me to the, the only time that I would actually recommend one leather over the other. If this is your first time getting a, a really good leather jacket, then I would I'd nudge you in the direction of either cowhide or steer hide. Just like your first pair of raw denims, I think your first great leather jacket should be something easy to break in and versatile. It's just all about setting you up for success. For me, if I had to pick, if I had to pick one, if the house was on fire and I had to either take the Commando or the Enfield, which would I take? <sighs> to be honest, I, I think I would take the Enfield for a couple of reasons. For one thing, this is the first time I've ever actually worn horsehide leather and I'm really enjoying seeing how this breaks in, seeing how it develops. I mean, I've had the Commando for going on four or five years now, and I've had the Enfield for, for less than a year. So, like, it's really just the beginning of that journey. And also, I like the way that the horsehide has been tanned over the standard competition weight leather that Vanson's used in the Commando. The horsehide that's been used in the Enfield, it seems to be T-Core leather. And that means that it is a, a brown leather, usually quite a dark brown leather, that's been over dyed with black. That means that with time and with wear, those brown undertones are just gonna, they're gonna pop out and you get a lot more dimension to the, the look, the overall wear of the, of the jacket with this T-Core leather. The Commando, on the other hand, it's made of the competition leather from Vanson. Tough stuff, like really. But it is, it's black through and through, which means that as it wears off, it almost wears down to, to like a dusty, dark gray. Very cool in itself, but I'm just, I'm preferring the T-Core at the moment. Having said all that, I like the style of the Commando way more than I do the Enfield. I don't know, it's just, for me, this is the best style of biker jacket that I've ever seen. So, Christian, what about a CRD left field collab using this style with the, the horse side leather? So, yeah, I'd be saving the Commando. There's just, there's way too many memories in this jacket. I've had it for so long. And it, honestly, it's just, it's way better in a fight. So if you are in the market for a leather jacket and you are stuck in the topic of cowhide versus horsehide, I'm not too sure if this video has made it any easier for you, but hopefully you are a little bit more furnished with the information that you're gonna need to, to make the right choice for, for your needs and for your lifestyle. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little departure from the denim. And Wilson, thank you very much for the reminder to, to get out of the indigo lane for a bit. And guys, if you have been enjoying the video, it'd be amazing if you'd give us one of those thumbs up. It really, it does help the channel out. It helps us grow. It tells YouTube that we're there and it works whatever magic with the algorithm that it has to. So if you do that, it's, it's very, very much appreciated. And that just leaves me to say, guys, as always, I hope everyone is happy and healthy out there. Hope you're taking care of yourselves. I hope you're taking care of each other and we'll see you in the next video. And now I'm gonna take off this jacket because it's boiling hot and I've been wearing jackets indoors for far too long. Do you guys remember the times where I used to wear sunglasses indoors in the vlogs all the time? I guess my grandson or so will do that. Son of a bitch.